All right, guys, uh, today we're gonna be uh, installing some sound deadening in Amontis' Accord. We're gonna be using this uh, Killmatic. Killmat. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, nothing too crazy, 2009 Honda Accord. Um, the reason why I wanted to go with sound deadening is it's the most overlooked part of doing a sound system in your car. Um, these cars are notorious for having terrible sound deadening, terrible road noise. So that was the last piece of the puzzle uh, for the sound system that I have. Now, as for the actual speakers itself in the car, there's nothing crazy. I have JBL clubs in the front, JBL concerts in the back with a rock for, I think it's a P300. I think, yeah, it's a P300 the, uh, powered sub. So obviously nothing crazy. It doesn't bump like crazy, but it's just enough for good sound quality. And I'm extremely satisfied with it. So there's nothing factory in here left anymore. Um, so yeah. There's a lot of also road noise whenever we're driving the car yep. with, uh, like without having this, like we'll see, we'll see how much it uh, changes it by. We'll do a before and after we have a little decimeter reader. And yeah, we're also trying to figure out if we can stop like bass and other like sounds from escaping the vehicle so they stay inside the vehicle. Yep. So yeah, uh, we're gonna get on to the uh, first test right now, which is the control. We're gonna see how it is before. Then we're gonna uh, show you guys how to install it and we're gonna see the results afterwards on how effective it is. Yep. All, All right, right. So... For the first part of the test, we will do a road noise test at 60 miles per hour and record our average decibel reading, which we compare to the reading after the sound installation is installed. 60 miles an hour. Right, so in the center of the car, it actually is, oh, sorry. But it was 65 when you're going 65. Now we do 70. 67 and a half. All right, so at highway speeds, we're looking at around uh, 65 to 70 decibels. We'll see if after we put sound dunning in, if it will change that. We're also gonna go on to our next test where we're gonna play music in the car at some certain volume and we're gonna see uh, what what the decibel reader says it is and then we're gonna see what it is like say 10 feet away outside of the car so that we can keep most of the sound uh, controlled and contained into the car. Is that right? Yep. All right. is in the garage we're gonna get ready to start pulling the door panels off for this project we're not gonna be doing we're not gonna be pulling the seats or the carpets what we're gonna be doing is a double layer on the insides of the door or all the four doors and a double layer for the trunk and we'll see if that makes any noticeable difference uh, reading up on the accord forums most people said that that's usually the most important part to do floor insulation isn't that bad so what I ordered from Amazon is a box of kill mat. It's the 50 mil thickness, 50 square feet of it. So I'll definitely have a lot left over. And it comes in these, uh, these patches. Um, you stick it on. The, once we actually get to installing it, I'll show you how to properly do it, uh, especially when it's not that warm out today. Uh, you're gonna wanna heat up the surface as well as, as, well as the actual kill mat. To apply it properly, as you can see, it has these little bubbles on it. And to apply that properly, that's what these rollers are for. Got a set of three from Amazon for 11 bucks. I'll leave the links to the rollers as well as the kill mat in the description. This was $60. I think they dropped the price of the second I saw that I bought it. So when you roll this on, these little bubbles squeeze in and that's how you know you applied the kill mat properly. Another thing that you might need, but it's not necessary, is a trim removal set. Why I say it's not necessary, what I like to do if I don't have this is take masking tape or electrical tape, wrap it around a flathead and you can start prying panels off the same way. It's not necessary. You also need a screwdriver or I'll be using an impact with a bit set. That's just to get the panels off and something to cut the kill mat with. We're gonna try a razor blade. If it doesn't work, we'll maybe go to shears or scissors or something like that. So let's get to it. Let's get to removing the door panel. 
All right, so we are doing this on a Accord, but that doesn't matter. You can repeat this on all kinds of cars. It doesn't matter if you have a Honda, a Toyota, even like a German car. All cars usually have the same kind of uh, installation when it comes to door panels and removals. Usually it's ran along with clips over here all on the side. And then usually there's a few uh, screws or bolts hidden in like these little, uh, if you come closer, like you see that little panel right there, you can just pop this off and then there's gonna be a hidden bolt there. As well yeah. as here, that's how it is for the Accord. You pop this panel off, there's two Phillips heads behind this. Yeah. And door panel pops off, you can disconnect or can, pull yeah, this out. You can disconnect the, uh, the hinging, yep. or you can leave it on and you can disconnect the, uh, the wires that go to the buttons and everything. All right, so we're gonna get the door panel removed and uh, we'll get back to you. Another thing you can use if you want to make your life easier is you can go to Harbor Freight and you get like this $2 packs of picks. It makes taking these uh, little like panels they have to remove much easier without damaging them. Even though I did this two days ago. All right, so that's the first clip out. Or tab, whatever you want to call it. There's the second one and as you can see we have two Phillips right there. use the pick or do you push it back in i pushed it back in <laughs> we'll cut that okay. out <laughs> all right and now all that's left are the clips so since this is a honda honda likes to make things easy usually all hondas at the bottom here they have a little uh notch to make it easy for you to stick your hand in or a pry bar to pull it off see we're just going around working the edges Trying to get all the clips out without breaking them. If we do break them, we do have backup clips, just like a universal set. So all of these popped off magically. That usually never happens. Um, I only have two clips left here. One, two. And usually you're supposed to remove this. There's a way to get around it without removing it, but I guess I'll pull it out. Yeah, you just, you just what's it called? Take this part, pull it forward, and then it comes out. Yep. And finally, you lift the door you panel up. up. There you go. There you go. And door panels off. Last thing for this, push these two clips in. Push the entire handle assembly forward. And then pull it out. All right. Now all we have to do is we have to disconnect these wires down here. That's off. I rock for, no, this is light. This is light. And I, I'm just gonna pull your lamp out. Rock <laughs> so, if you have maybe like a more luxurious car, you'll have airbags in the door, so you want to make sure you disconnect the battery. Honestly, whenever you work with anything electrical, so over here we're, dis we're disconnecting the door panel, and if say the door panel had airbags and we were just disconnecting it, they could have gone off, so just make sure uh, you either don't have airbags or just make sure you disconnect the battery just to not damage anything. So I'll we'll just pop this back in nicely for the mid time being, because no sound on these going over there. And now it's time to start taking the, uh, call it whatever you want off. And you'll probably need a heat gun for this. So we'll grab that. With this, usually you can just tape it back on with whatever you want. This is butyl spray. It's the same thing that's used in the sound deadening material. It's sound deadening material pretty much. It reduces vibrations, everything like that. But you can tape it back on, maybe with aluminum tape. That's usually the best bet, but we'll see what we have in the shop and uh, we'll go that way. So we're pulling the plastic slash whatever the hell Honda decided to put on here, this padding back. That side is already finished. So we're gonna start doing the front. I'm gonna finish up the front, put the door panels back on, then we're gonna start on the rear and on the trunk. So as you can see, it is hollow in here. Uh, and it's very easy to get in and all the gaps. I'll take my watch off before doing this. I don't scratch it up, but Yep, it's fairly easy. So you're just gonna have to warm this up warm the actual uh, sound deadening up and Just stick it on there cut it into pieces. So, you know, everything fits now usually the way most people do it is they cover 25% of the surface in sound deadening because it's mostly to stop vibrations and oscillations that uh, the metal picks up I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna do full coverage of 
this part, back panel, and I'll uh, stick some strips on the back of this as well, wherever I can, on the back of the actual uh, door panel. Um, and probably gonna do double layers over here and here, and one layer on the inside of the door panel itself. Okay, so what I like to do is I take the sheets. Uh, with this one, I already cut it, but I'll put the sheet fully in there, and to mock it up to where I need it to be, I will put it, let's say here, and we have a hard line right here where this is. So I just crease it along that line to remember where it is, pull it out, take the razor and just cut it. The razor is sharp enough to cut through this. That's how I cut this one. So pretty sure everybody has a razor. So next step is to get the heat gun. I'll heat up the surface just a tad bit. It doesn't have to be scorching hot. Give that some heat as well. This is, it's preferred to do this on a warm summer day. Right now we're in spring and the weather in Jersey is all over the place. But if you use a heat gun, you'll be fine. So it's good now, a lot more malleable, flexible. So I will peel just the corner back. And this is very sticky stuff, so don't try to get it all over the place. If you can see, it's already all over my hands. Because you heated it up or no? Uh, yeah, but even if you're doing it like a warm summer day, I mean, this thing is ridiculously sticky. Yeah? So well, Let me take away your stickiness. Oh, shit. Once we wait to roll it on. So I just like to peel it back a little bit just to get it positioned. I put it to where I need it to start. I get that on there good. Then I grab the back, or the rest of the backing layer, and I just peel back as I stick. So, there we go. Nice. Now that way, if you do it just how I did, you're not gonna have any air pockets or air bubbles because um, you're pressing it as you're pulling the sticky layer off. So you just press it along and get all the air bubbles out. It's like putting a screen protector on your phone. Exactly, it's the exact same thing. And now we get one of the suitable rollers. Uh, probably gonna use the biggest one I can get in there. And press hard down on it and roll it in there. Just got my finger caught in it. <laughs> Pretty nice. So I get in from here. I need to apply a lot of pressure to this. And the manufacturer states that that's exactly how you need to do it for proper adhesion and the best results. Mm -hmm. Why is that, you know? Well, it just gets it flat to the surface, you know? Okay. one of the smaller rollers and get into the edges. It's gonna be a lot easier than it is with the beefy one. So, press that one on there. And it's looking good. So I did this uh, as a demonstration. Usually you'd wanna stick everything on onto your panel and then you roll everything at once because that's going to be very tedious. You just want to stick everything on and then just go over it with a roller. So that's pretty much it. That's the process that you do to apply this and you want to get every corner. So we're going to apply the first layer on the outside of the door panel and I'll do that little hitting test that I did at the beginning of the video on the door, see how that sounds. Then we're going to do a second layer and uh, that will be it for this door panel and we have to do the same thing all around. So we gotta do that to all four doors as well as a trunk. So we're gonna be here for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start removing this uh, liner off the trunk. So all this is held in is these visible clips. So we're just gonna take a clip remover and we're gonna just pull it out. If, it will, if I can do this one handed, that is. There we go. I'll show you how this looks when I get all out. All right. Got the headliner off, it's right here, and this is how it's looking under here. A bit harder than the door panels, but 
if we take our time, we can get sheets and put them in here, up here, roll them out nicely. We can also put it on top of this panel just to keep even more sound in here. And yeah, let's go see what Amantis is up to. How's the progress? It's not bad. Uh, it's annoying, but it's yeah. this bash bar that's kind of getting in the way, but obviously that's for safety. Well, I you know, T-bone and die. There's, there's two different Honda guys. So me, I would have cut that bash bar out because weight reduction, and I wouldn't be doing stuff like this. And then there's guys like him, you know, sound quality, and obviously <laughs> he doesn't mind putting in 50 pounds of uh, kill mat. Please sponsor us, by the way. <laughs> this door panel, or actually the door itself, is all finished. This is a double layer. Everywhere that is easily accessible, I didn't. Like this parts, I couldn't get it down that flat. You could go over it with like the, some edge of some something metal. It has good coverage and there is already a massive sound difference and when you knock on the door, it sounds like a Soviet fridge. But yeah, I did a couple pieces everywhere. Tiny, tiny little pieces like this. This is probably gonna need a lot more. It's a little rattly over here. The wires are gonna need cleaning up. All the zip ties need to be cut. These need to be tidied up just to get rid of as much rattle as possible. Then we can tape this back on and we can start doing the actual door panel itself um the plastic parts of it and the plastic parts of it i'm going to do the same thing where i can fit little pieces i will put little pieces like this um just to eliminate as much noise and rattle as possible so yeah so driver's side door is finished alex over here is working on the rear pass or the rear driver door Howdy. um that's also coming along that's first layer right yeah first layer First layer, he has really nice coating and covering everywhere, good coverage. Yes, sir. So, yeah, slowly chugging along. Still got those two left and obviously the trunk, but yeah, almost there. I did little patches all over the place just to pretty much give it some more cushion when it presses up against the actual door. So there's less rattling that way. Um, and this looks just about to be 25% coverage, maybe 20%. I don't want to go too overkill. I don't want this to not fit. And then, I mean, good luck taking this stuff off. It's like cemented onto there at this point. So now uh, I'm going to tape that plastic on the actual door. And then we're going to put the panel on and see any, if there's any difference. That door panel is in. Everything went in nicely. There's not a crunch or a rattle that comes from it now. Um, solid in there so nicely put in hopefully there's going to be some good results now this side alex finished up i taped everything up once again this looks a little bit jank because it is masking tape uh, i could be using aluminum tape instead but honestly it doesn't matter because masking tape the way that that works is the longer it stays on there the harder it gets caked on so even right now, it's hard to peel off, but the longer it stays on there, the more stuck it's gonna get. So I definitely do not see this coming off. Um, yeah, so this panel is done, or this door is done. This panel I just finished up. Uh, I put a little bit less in here. It doesn't really matter. The noise isn't gonna come through here, nor do I have any speakers in the back because of course come with rear deck speakers, as you can see. So this does not need as much as the uh, driver door didn't because that does have speakers so i'm just going to plop this on now and the driver's side should be finished and next we'll move on to the trunk and this side is finished so now if we close the door oh my god it sounds so good test it with this one the door just feels so much heavier holy crap listen to that All right, now time to get onto the trunk. Uh, this should not be too hard because there's no easy way to access it. So I'll probably put a piece here, 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 get in here up top as much as I can and uh, probably do the bottom right here. There's not much lighting, but the rear deck, the bottom of it, everything tends to rattle over here. So I'll put sound ending around that and possibly if I have anything left over, we'll go into the wheel arches in the back. All right, so we're all finished. I hooked the battery back up. Everything's working fine. Um, extremely satisfied with the result.
The, uh, the doors, just the way they close, you could hear it in the tone. There's no more echo or oscillations afterwards. It's just one big thump. Same thing for this door and all the other ones around. The trunk I'm not too satisfied with, but the way that Honda did the Accord is that this is plastic right here. And to take it off, it's a bit of a pain. So we just decided to leave it as is. I did shove a little few pieces over here because I was able to pry this up a bit. So there's a few pieces over here. It doesn't rattle as bad. This, it did not sound like this. It was absolutely hollow. Um, same thing for this door. Sounds great. We have not yet done the testing with decibel meter. So we're going to do that tomorrow morning because it is pretty late. I don't want to be bumping music anywhere out in public. Um, obviously it's going to be a lot quieter towards the night, so the readings wouldn't be correct. So I'll have to go back out at the same time of day, um, and redo the measurements with the sound insulation installed. So yeah, so I'll see you in the morning. So we're done with the installation of all the sound deadening. We have it on all four doors, like double layered. We have it on some parts of the interior panels. We also have the trunk and we did a little bit on the rear quarter panel from the inside of the trunk. So yeah, whenever we do the knock test on it, you guys can see that it's completely different from what it was. All right, so, so here's the fender, just straight metal. And here's the door. I feel like I'm just hitting a block of wood. Over here, we put over here a bit. Over here, we weren't able to get too much because of the bracing, but we put a bit and it definitely fixed it. Trunk also all feels solid, so. We're gonna test how much sound is escaping from the inside to the outside. So we're gonna play the same track again. We're gonna have it uh, set on the Sony so that the volume's up to 40, and I'm gonna be again like five uh, paces away from the car. So, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so Amantis, uh, how long have you had the like sound system currently, like before you did the insulation? So we I've had the sound system for about 10 months now. Uh, so close to a year. So you obviously know how the car sounds. And yeah. obviously I've driven with your car and I can already tell you the difference is crazy. Yep. Like you can't really hear much of the outside, but the amount of like bass that's now kept in the car like it makes some songs like really bassy as before i always like joked around how you don't have that much bass yeah so there's clearly a visible difference as alex said there's a lot more bass that's kept inside the car it's not escaping through the doors through the trunk uh, because obviously bass it's lower frequencies and the lower the frequency is and obviously not even the frequency also the wavelength it will pass through uh doors and just any sort of like like solid objects easier so now that they're sound deadening, it's more thickness for it to pass through. So it won't, it has a harder time leaving the car. So it keeps the bass inside. It sounds a lot nicer. <laughs> so already by ear, uh, it's a huge difference knowing, obviously I've, I've had the car for over a year. I know exactly how it sounds at these speeds. Even on a windy day, it is extremely quiet compared to what it would be uh, or what it was before we put the sound deadening in. Now, obviously the numbers might not reflect that as much. I probably might be a three or to four decibel drop, but you gotta keep in mind, decibels are on a logarithmic scale. So it actually is a big difference. So I'm extremely satisfied with the result. Uh, absolutely for $70, uh, it's a steal for how much of a difference it makes for how cheap it is. Yeah, it makes the car a lot more enjoyable to be in. Like the sound increased, the luxury of it increased. Like the only con I'd say is the weight. I mean, like, if you're trying to go fast, obviously you want rate reduction, but if you have a lot of power and torque, like, you don't really care about weight, so... It's like, if you want if you want this, just, like, lose weight yourself as a driver, and, <laughs> exactly. and that'll counteract it, so... So, uh, that whole box, there's about, uh, 47 sheets, I counted, that came in it. That's all right. No, left. It was 47 sheets, and we have about, I think, 10 left over. Well, uh, like, 6 to 10. 6 to 10 left over, I... I didn't really count that well, but oh, look at that broken BMW. <laughs> I wonder what happened. It's 
pretty clean. But uh, yeah. Venmo system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, six to ten sheets left over. So we used about what, like thirty. Thirties? No. Like four, we, say, we, we, sheets, we used so we forty, 40 sheets. sheets. Yeah, we used forty sheets for this whole car. And this is a pretty big sedan. So if you're doing a little hatchback, obviously you don't need that much. If you're doing a big SUV, you're probably going to need uh, a bit more. And keep in mind, we only did the closing and opening panels. If you're going to do the whole car, you might and probably should go ahead and get two boxes of those. Yeah, especially if you're doing the carpet and the headliner. We do have enough to do the headliner. We just don't want to deal with the headliner. Yep. Especially with this car, because there's already, I'm sure, there's like padding for the headliner, of course, and then there's a cardboard, and above the cardboard, there's definitely some sort of insulation. 